surviving, you're trying to sneak a win, but you want every opportunity to do. Fighters, great fights. That's the mantra of our Pro Box TV. Tonight, our Wednesday night fights, live right here on your boxing channel, come to you from our world headquarters in Tampa, Florida. This is Pro Box TV. We don't promote boxers, we promote boxing. We will get things started with a six round matchup in the super featherweight division. 6 0, 22 year old Dominic Bayet passed the toughest test of his young professional career back in June, right here on Pro Box TV. Tonight, he will be challenged once again by ultra durable Mexican Damian Elcala. Next up, an eight rounder in the super bantamweight division. It is one punch Zorro. Two-time world title contender, Jonas Sultan of the Philippines. His opponent is the Punisher, Frank Gonzalez, who is riding a three-fight win streak and tonight fights for the fourth time here in 2023. Our co-main event, 10 rounds in the super featherweight division. The winner takes away the WBA Feta Centro title. 15-0, William Foster III, once again looking to display his explosiveness as he fights Sonora, Mexico's Misael Lopez, a high-volume puncher who has promised to bring the fight to the silent assassin. Then our main event is for the WBA Continental North America Light Heavyweight Belt as Hot Rod Radovoya Kalajic looks to systematically break down and finish the Brit, Mickey Ellison, who tonight fights for the first time here in the United States. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg, joined by one of my powerful partners tonight, the former world champion, Chris Algieri. The Magic Man is in Italy, having a great time. We hope we miss you, Paulie. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. But Chris, let's talk about a guy who we just talked to a couple of weeks ago, known as Hot Rod. He fought for the belt against Archer Better Biav. He sparred with Archer Better Biav recently for three weeks. He said it was invaluable time. Yeah, I mean, he came up short against Better Biav, but Better Biav has turned out to be the demon in the division. Looking at that fight in hindsight, it's like, well, okay, there's a learning experience. Now that he's been able to spend time in, him with, in, uh, in camp with him, I think is fantastic for, for Hot Rod because I've heard about those stories about that gym. Sparring Better Biav is no joke. He brings in tons of sparring partners. He pays them a lot of money because he's going in there bringing all of his pressure and his power. So it was great for that Hot Rod was there giving his guy as much as he got. You know, and, and Hot Rod said that the pace that Better Biaf spars at is the same pace and pressure that he brings in the live fights. That's what I've heard. And, and, and even Hot Rod said, this was much better. He was a lot calmer. Yes. He boxed a lot better. He was a lot smarter. Not as wild as he was when he fought Better Biaf in their actual fight. So I want to see what he's been able to bring from that sparring into the fight tonight. All right, Mickey Ellison fighting in the United States for the first time tonight, but he is a frequent headliner at home in the UK, and he's gone on the road before Chris and played the role of the spoiler perfectly. Well, he sounded like the spoiler in the fighter meetings a couple days ago. Super confident guy coming in here as if, hey, man, this, this is my show. Yeah. And that's the mentality you want to have if you're coming in as the B-side, I guess, a tough prospect like Hot Rod. And he is excited to face off against a guy like Hot Rod because of the accolades, the 27 and two record. Mickey Ellison knows this could be the biggest win of his professional career. Everybody who fights on Pro Box TV knows that this could be a huge turning point in their career. This platform gives these fighters an opportunity that they can launch them into the stratosphere. And he knows that. So he's going to come in in great shape. Cannot wait for fights for you tonight. Wednesday night fights on your boxing channel. And we get things started with a six rounder. Dominic Valle putting his perfect record on the line against Damian Alcala, our tail of the tape for our first fight of the night. 22-year-old Tampa, Florida's Valle taking on the 29-year-old Dominic, three inches taller. He will have a slight reach advantage. All right, we are set to get things started. And with that, let's get it to Beatrice Calise. 
Welcome to Wednesday Night Fight here at Provox TV. Bienvenidos a Miércoles de Boxeo en Provox TV. Tonight, we bring the future stars of the sweet science. Esta noche, traemos a las futuras estrellas del arte de Cristiana. And we start the night off with a six round bout in the super featherweight division. Seis vueltas en la división peso super pluma. Los jueces son the judges are Dennis Devon, Chami Shipman, and Joey Ware. Referee in charge, Michael De Jesus. Introducing the red corner, la esquina roja, wearing silver and blue, vestido de plateado y azul. Su peso oficial, 113 libras, his official weight, 113 pounds. Tonight, he enters the ring, all defeated as a pro with six victories and five knockouts. Esta noche, entra ring invicto como profesional con seis victorias y cinco knockouts. The Lodge, Florida. En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, wearing red and black, vestido de negro y rojo. Su peso oficial, 119.8 libras, his official weight, 129.8 pounds. With a record of seven victories, two losses, and one knockout. De sangre mexicana, Tijuana, Mexico! Scheduled for six rounds in the super featherweight division, Dominic Valle fighting out of Tampa, Florida, the younger of the Valle brothers, looking to move to 7 0 against Damian Alcala. Here we go. It's time to fight. Valle in the silver and blue trunks, red and black trunks for 7 and 2, 29 year old Damian Alcala. Lead right hand, right down the middle. Dominic Valle in his fight against Carlos Rosario, who came in with a six and one record, literally finished the fight. We called it, of course, Chris, with one second remaining. So he went the full six rounds back in November of last year and almost the full six rounds the last time. That, that is valuable time. You want to get in and out, but if you're in there, you can learn big time. Hey, listen, we don't get paid for overtime, but getting those rounds in when you're young is really important. Good shot back and forth. Good over him right there from Kyle. But as I was saying, Goldie, yeah, you, you want to get those rounds in, but you still want to get that knockout. So if you get a knockout in the last round, that's ideal. Ooh, yes. watch your head, It's a win-win. Mark Therese happy because he's got plenty of tape. And Dominic go, gets to add another KO to his record. These guys are having trouble fighting each other early here in round one. Second fight in the United States for El Duro, Damian Alcala, who had his training camp in Mexico, in Tijuana. Tijuana versus Puerto Rico, how can we not have a banger? And here we are, round number one, 90 seconds in, and, and these guys are tagging each other. Aggressive style, good chin, on the scouting report of Alcala, and an all-pressure fighter. Both Dominic and his older brother, Marcus Valle. They both said in the fighter meetings, we'll find each other, it won't be a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I really like watching both these guys fight. Very, very exciting. I mean, the brothers, that is the Valle brothers. Let go, Blue! Good Blue, shot to the go. body. Box out of that, guys. Brent, let him go! Older brother, Marcus, in the corner of Dominic tonight. Also unbeaten as a professional. Dominic does a nice job of mixing his offense up. He throws a lot of head shots, but he does not forget the body that we see a left hook down low, which I think is one of his better punches that he uses to break guys down. And, and not only does he utilize that 73-inch reach and that 5'11 frame for a super featherweight, Chris, but he, if he's not jabbing, he's keeping that lead hand in the face of his opponent. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a volume guy. His, his offense is his defense. He likes to get to you, let hands go. There's that check hook on the outside as well. 
quick hook lands. Ryder for round number one. And again to the body. Well, El Duro, the toughness is being tested early by Dominic Fire. You know, I, I was complimenting Dominic on the utilization of the jab, and I guess Mark disagreed because he said, can we get the jab going a little bit? Round number two, 22-year-old Valle, silver and blue trunks, black and red trunks for Damian Alcala. You know, I like that about Coach Mark. He doesn't mince words. He no. tells you what he wants. Doesn't sugarcoat anything. This is boxing. There's no, there's no room for that. And his bond with the Valle brothers, and, and they were the first to really come in to the Mark Foray Plant City Pro Box stable is extremely outstanding. Dominic on a nice right hand that caught El Duro on the chin back to Mark. Big swing and a miss, round number two. If Alcala can get any offense going. Yeah, he's just covering up, trying to recover now. I think he's still feeling that right hand from a few moments ago. Oh, big overhand right. And that left hook is one to look out for as well. If you're there, it is. He just missed, Chris, from Dominic Valle, one of his favorite punches. Yeah, there's a noticeable power difference between these two. Dominic Valle just has the much heavier hands. Chris, they often times say you're you're born with power. You're, you're going to be a power puncher or you're not. But in this modern day of fitness and science, there's there's a way to bolster your power meter as well, and the Valles do a great job. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's always a potential or a ceiling to how hard you're going to hit. But the Valle brothers train very, very hard. They're big for the weight class. And obviously, they got all that volume. A lot of those knockouts come from volume, not yeah. just one-punch power. He has landed four straight jabs and now goes to the body. Still a minute on the clock here in the second. All Dominic Valle thus far. Yeah, there's not been much offense from Akala this round. First round was a little more competitive. Not this round, it's been all Valle. Caught him in the body again. Oh, that liver shot. Beautiful shot along the ropes. Valle throwing it. That jab will not be so not being utilized or the uppercut at the end of this round. Nasty. Beautifully timed shot. Hey, hands up. You want to continue? And all those jabs opened it up, Chris. Yeah, I'd like to, I was going to say right before he dropped them that Valle's doing a good job of eating using the jab from that middle distance. A lot of guys don't throw their jab from there. Valle has been. Big flurry here to end the second. Kyle is just holding on. Jab, 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 uppercut, canvas. Beautiful combination. Nice, tricky right hand. We mentioned those jabs from that middle distance range. Getting a bead on his man, and it's going to be the right uppercut right there that cracks Ocala on the chin. Puts him on the seat of his pants, and Eldoro in a place that he's not used to being. On the canvas, hurt, holding on. Oh, super shot. Right uppercut, right to the point of the chin. Could not ask for a better shot. And that was, Chris, the first time Alcala's ever been knocked out. 
I'd be surprised if he's able to recover. His legs looked in all over the ring at the end of that round. Big time. Seven and two went the distance in both of his setbacks. And before, about a minute ago, he had never been knocked down. Round number three. Dominic Valle will look for the finish here. Stay within himself. And Come try to put Eldaro away. Yeah, if, if I'm Alcala here, I gotta go for it. I can't, I, I, backing up didn't help last round. He was trying to be defensive last round. He was gonna hit even more. I said, I'll cut again. He found it. Looking to finish it right here, right now, down for the second time. And just looking at the face, looking at the body language of Akala, it seems like the fight's being broken out of him. A lot of time on the clock here, round number three. Again with the uppercut. And he goes right back to the jab. Right back to keeping the, keeping the touches, on, touches on him. Bang, picking those big spots. Right what Mark Ferre was talking about at the end of round one. Set everything up with that jab. Dominic has been outstanding. Yeah, and that's the thing. When you got a guy who has a stance the way Alcala has, he's very heavy over that front foot. He goes backwards, it takes everything away. He's got no power. His face is right there to be hit, especially with jabs. And Dominic has been taking full advantage of that. Oh, there's that uppercut again. Dominic. And Marcus always call it effective aggression. And we are seeing it on display here. Valle is putting it all together now. Jabs, right hands, body shots, uppercuts. Combinations. And very long and accurate. Love it, love this style of fighting. Big fan of this kid, I like the way he goes out there. Even when he's dominating, it's fun to watch. Better movement there from Okali. Got his legs back. All out pressure by 6 and 0 Dominic Valle. Just 22 years old. Huge uppercut. Oh, and again. Showing that he is durable, but for how much longer? I see where he gets the nickname El Duro. Yep. Come on, man. How many uppercuts are you going to get hit with? And again. And more for good luck. Right in front of our broadcast position. I think the should be really good looking. Look in here. Show. I think the corner should really be looking at their man here. Punishing round from Dominic Valle. Uppercuts non-stop. Lead uppercut there is the left hand. There's another one. And then you see that hurt Okala. He's just covering up. Doesn't have his eyes up. Goes down. And more pressure, more punches from Valle. That left uppercut, man, that thing was vicious. I couldn't believe Alcala stood up to that shot. And then there was three or four more uppercuts with both hands after that series. That's another thing I like about Valle, man. He, he's a volume puncher, but there, he, there's no break. <laughs> you don't yeah. get a chance to rest. He just, both hands coming like the tide over chance. and over. 85 days ago, his victory over Carlos Rosario. We are in the fourth round of this six rounder Amen. to get things started. Dominic Valle again with the uppercut. If I'm Coach Frey, I'm saying just throw uppercuts. You can't miss any when yeah. throws. He had to overcome a lot of things in preparation for that Rosario fight, illness, postponements. But that was the fight he wanted, Chris. It was a quality opponent. It gave him an opportunity to showcase where he is 
in his evolution right now. And man, he's putting on another showcase here tonight. Yeah, that was a very impressive performance last time out. But this is maybe even more impressive. Yes. I mean, he's got a very tough guy in front of him. And he is systematically breaking him down with every weapon in the book. Whenever the Valle brothers are asked about, you know, how long was your training camp? How was your preparation? They always give that same answer. I'm never really out of the gym. This is my life. This is my calling. That's the way you got to be early on. Can't teach hard. Can't teach discipline either. These, these, these kids really, really work. I've seen them in the gym. They're both workhorses, and it shows. Training every day, working towards my goal of being an all-time great. Midway point around four. Two knockdowns already scored by Dominic Valle. Again, I, I, the corner really needs to be looking at their man. He's not mustering back, with coming back with any kind of offensive positioning punches that are having any kind of effect. He's really just moving around the ring, surviving. You could hear that shot to the body. It's one thing to be tough, but you got to be trying to win. I love the different angles that Baez throwing from tonight. Yeah, he mixes up his punches really well. He's a volume puncher, but he changes heights, he changes angles, he changes uh, distance. He's a major league pitcher with about eight different looks. Right. At minimum, at minimum. Yeah, and also, like, this fight, more than you, more than I've seen in the past, he's staying more defensively sound as well. Yes. Not as many openings. Trying to throw back here late in the fourth. You know, as much as I've been praising Valle, you know I got to give some criticism as well. One of the reasons why this fight has not been stopped yet is there's no change in speed. There's no there's no sneaky changeup coming from Valle. He's throwing great combinations, awesome volume, good power has been shown, but it's the shot the guy doesn't see. You got to mix it up, change speeds on him. I would say that that man right there is in very deep waters after four rounds against Dominic Valle. I can't believe he's still here. He must have brought a scuba tank with him. <laughs> he's been drowning for four rounds, but he's still here. And he's got a he's got his his dive partner down there with the buddy too, giving him the extra oxygen. But I did say at the top of the show, ultra durable Mexican Damian Alcala had never been knocked down in his previous nine bouts, knocked down twice here tonight. Scheduled for six. This is round number five. Mike Goldberg, Chris Algieri, great to be with you on a Wednesday night here on Pro Box TV. Silver and blue for Valle, Alcala in the red and black. Yeah, no question about the heart about Alcala. He's in there. He's not mustering up much offense, not really in a position to win any of these rounds, but he is surviving these huge, huge shots and volleys from Dominic Valle all night long. Came into tonight on a three-fight win streak. Second fight in the U.S., second American opponent. His U.S. debut was July of last year in Phoenix, and he lost a six-rounder by unanimous decision. I think Valle might have heard what I said about that criticism last round. He's changing up his speeds now. He's not just throwing volume. He's looking, to, he's looking for that good shot that Alcala can't see. He's hiding it with the jab. Let's see if he can get it done. And as you mentioned as well, Chris, very sound defensively tonight. Yes, more, much more so than I've seen in the past. Oh, good change up there. Looked like he's going to throw the right hand up top, came down low. Beautiful shot on the belt line. 
almost ended the fight earlier, but he's not trying to hunt a knockout. Oh, Callum fires hard for the first time. Two big right hands catches Maya across the on the ropes. And Callum bringing it here in the fifth. Mexican heart on full display here. Mexico against Puerto Rico. What else would you expect? El Duro. Blood from the nose of Alcala. Stop, stop. I'm grabbing. Just when we were talking about the newly found defense of Valle, because in past fights he has been hit with big shots before. He gets cracked along the road, standing a little too tall. To the body. Good left hook to the liver there. Packs Ocala up. Damage around the right eye of Dominic Valle, though. Valle doing a good job not letting him tie up, pushing him up and punching. Great round five. See some of that action from round five here. Big overhand right catches Valle as he gets tall along the ropes. Ocala has some of the only success he's had tonight. When it looked like he was almost down and out, been dropped twice already. Comes back with a huge flurry in that round. Lands another overhand right that landed on Valle's head. But Valle also came back to the end of the round, reasserted himself, right at the ship, so to speak. Chris, I don't know if everyone at home could hear the corner audio. Don't be stupid. Don't be so tough. That was coming from Big Brother Marcus in the corner of Dominic. Tell the little brother, stay with your game plan. That's the pot calling the kettle black, isn't it? You got that right. <laughs> Sixth and final round. And Valle comes out and establishes that jab immediately. And nice triple jab. And that's what set up the uppercut that originally got Ocala in all that trouble three rounds ago. That's what put Alcala in those deep waters in rounds two, three, and four. Sixth and final round. Alcala looked pretty hurt to the body at the end of the last round. Smart of Valle to start going back down there. Marcus, one year, nine months, 13 days older, said don't be so tough in there. Stay within yourself. And Coach Mark allowed him a moment to speak to his brother. <laughs> Sometimes you need a different voice. You got that right. Oh, big right hand upstairs. The one one two in this sixth and final round. Valle six and zero oh with five finishes. Alcala seven and two coming into tonight. It will not be the type of victory, quote unquote, that Alcala was looking for tonight, but it certainly will be a statement to many others if Damien can last the next uh, 80 seconds or so. Yeah, I mean, he's looking pretty sturdy here. He's shown himself to live, to live up to the nickname. He's definitely a very durable, tough guy. It's a big if though, right, Chris? Yeah, we know how by is. He wants those knockouts. Even if it is with one second left in the fight. Yeah, he got that last round knocked out his last fight. I'm sure he'd love to do the same here, which would be a massive statement. Under a minute. Wednesday night fights on your boxing channel. How tough is Alcala, though, man? Uh, Took such a beating those first four rounds. Comes back to hurt Valle for a moment. Comes out with some big punches. Didn't As advertised, Chris. Yeah, didn't think we were going to be here in round six the way those first couple rounds were going. 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. 
Now Kala told us in the fighter meeting, we can both apply pressure, let the better man win. The better man in this one has been Dominic Valle. But you got to get a lot of love and credit to Damian Alcala. Tons of heart. They go the distance. Another great test for 22-year-old Dominic Valle. More valuable rounds in the bank. one looked like we were going to have an all-out slugfest. Both these guys came out, didn't have any trouble finding each other early on. But Valle, with his length, his volume punching, his variation in punch in punches, was the big difference here. That beautiful right uppercut, which proved to be an, an issue for Alcala all night long. He had zero defense for that shot. It was the right uppercut there that had started off the trouble. The left uppercut became a big weapon later on. That lead hand, there it is right there. And those middle rounds, I mean, it was all Valle. He scored two knockdowns, was pouring a ton of pressure and punishment on Ocala. But Ocala, man, talk about a Mexican chin, Mexican toughness, Mexican heart. Came back big in round five, landed some shots of his own along the ropes as Valle got tall. Here we see another overhand, another shot of that overhand right that catches Valle. But then Valle finished strong as he started. There's a big body shot at the end of that round five that had him hurt. And really another dominant sixth round from Valle. Good action fight. So Dominic Valle and Damian Alcala go the distance. With the official decision here is Beatrice Calis. After six rounds of pure pro box, this is the final decision. Después de seis vueltas de puro pro box, esta es la decisión oficial. Judges Alcal, judges uh, Davis Devon and Chami Chipman turn identical scorecards of 52 and 60, and Joe Ware turn a card of 53 and 59. And the winner, by way of unanimous decision, el ganador por decisión unánime. Dominic Valle goes the distance for the second time in his young career. First to knock down Damian Alcala, did it once, did it twice. And Alcala earned a ton of respect from the Valles and everyone watching here on Provox TV tonight. In our main event later tonight, we get Hot Rod, who has sparred with Arthur Vetterbia. And here on Pro Box TV, on frequent occasion, Chris, you and Paulie and others have your own type of sparring session. All right, so. Round six, it's who would win a fantasy matchup between our own, Pro Box own, Sean Porter and Tim Bradley. What big fight? What winner? What big fight? These four guys, one guy's bowling balls is headed to the other guy. The other guy comes in like a truck and runs it in. This ends in a no contest. This ends in a contest. <laughs> Accidental headbutt, no decision, no contest. Everybody goes home unhappy. And this is one of those styles Break. where you're like, oh, man, it's going to be a good fight. But in the end, you're going to be disappointed with a Break. no Break. contest. My counter that. Okay, t t they go to technical decision, and I think that's him starts faster, and he gets and he gets the win. Just read the question. Read the question. Who wins? It, well, <laughs> actually, I'm looking at my paper, and I didn't write anything down for the sixth round. We got a drop. No. Got a drop. Oh, and, come on. And, and, <laughs> instead, of, instead of mic drop, instead of mic drop, you got a, a bow tie drop. You I'm, throwing, I'm, throwing, I'm, I'm throwing my mic out of the room. I'm. Uh, but you, bow tie you know, drop. George, both I drop. 
You know, from, the great for, thing is for me to come on so strong at the second half of that fight, to only get a draw. Answer. I mean, it's the who, how are you going to get a winner in that fight? No, I shot. mean, I, I never plus, expected a plus, technical like plus plus these are our pro box teammates. I'm not going to get going against any of them. Well, speaking of pro box teammates, we are adding to our already all star lineup with Sean Porter, Teddy Atlas and Tim Bradley all joining our Pro Box TV family. Chris, for you to stay in a verbal sparring battle with Pauli Molinaggi says a lot about your heart and determination. We do it every week, and it's funny. <laughs> Tim, Tim Bradley grabs you at one of the top break shows. He goes, man, he's like, you're spicy. I go, yeah, <laughs> I got to be with Pauli. Welcome, Sean Porter, Teddy Atlas, Tim Bradley, set now for One Punch Zorro from the Philippines, Jonas Sultan. His opponent, fighting out of Hialeah, Florida, is Frank Gonzalez. Our tail of the tape for this eight round super bantam weight fight. 32 year old Filipino against the 26 year old whose father is from Cuba and mother is from Peru. Six age, six year age difference. Everything else is virtually identical as we get set for an eight rounder in the super bantamweight division. And with the official introductions, once again, Beatrice Calise. And we continue this Wednesday night fight in Pro Box TV with an eight round bout in the super bantamweight division. Continuamos esta noche de Pro Box con ocho vueltas en la división super gallo. Los jueces son the judges are Michael Ross, Dennis Devon, and Shami Chipman. The referee in charge, Christopher Young. And introducing the red corner in the esquina roja, wearing black, vestido de negro. Su peso oficial, 121.2 libras, his official weight, 121.2 pounds. With a pro record of 18 victories, 6 losses, and 11 knockouts. Con un record profesional de 18 victorias, 6 derrotas, y 11 knockouts. From San Bongas, Philippines, Jonas Wampach Soro. In the blue corner, in the esquina azul, wearing purple, vestido de morado, su peso oficial, 122.8 libras, his official weight, 122.8 pounds, with a pro record of 12 victories, 3 losses, and 6 knockouts, con un record profesional de 12 victorias, 3 derrotas, y 6 knockouts. Repping the 305 Miami, Florida, Frank El Castigador, Gonzalez. Scheduled for eight rounds in the super bantamweight division. Two time world title challenger, one punch Zorro, Jonas Sultan against Frank Gonzalez, the Punisher. Look when you're ready. Look when you're ready. Bail. Here we go. It's time to fight. Black trunks for One Punch Zorro. Purple trunks for Frank Gonzalez. I called an upset victory of Sultan's a few fights ago against top-rated, top-ranked prospect Carlos Caraballo. Scored, I think, three or four knockdowns in that fight. Ended up getting the win, and then subsequently got a world title shot against Paul Butler. 14 and 0. Carlos was that night that you called that fight. That one punch Zorro earned the unanimous decision victory in. Yeah, he's very, very explosive, has good power, and is extremely, extremely durable. Great chin. Tonight, Gonzalez is Sultan's 20th opponent with a winning record. He has not faced any boxer without a winning record in almost a decade, since 2014. Tells you at the level 
in which he continues to perform, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's rare these days. A lot of guys, even when they come off of a loss, they'll, they'll take a quote unquote easy fight or a guy with not a great record. Not, not Sultan. A lot of movement early from Gonzalez. Lateral movement side to side, looking to see what Sultan has. A few years back, Sultan also earned a huge victory in what looks even more impressive modern day against the now WBA bantamweight world champion, John Real Casimiro. That was in 2017. Yeah, took out a massive win. Yeah, Sultan uh, is one of those guys. You, you, you got to look past his record because yes. of the opposition that he's that he's faced and how he's performed. And that title fight against Paul Butler, the Brit, was in the UK for the interim WBO bantamweight belt. That was his last fight 503 days ago. Again, that's a testament to Pro Box TV. We've got a guy who was fighting for a world title in his last fight. Uh and is here and is the second opener of the show. Yeah. That's, that's how deep our cards are. They just keep getting better and better, don't they, partner? Absolutely. Making our job very easy. You got that right. Fourth fight of 2023 for Frank Gonzalez. You know, Sultan is, is taking advantage of, of the body shots of Gonzalez because of that lateral movement. He's not giving him a whole lot upstairs, so he's been focusing on the body. Smart tactic from, from Jonas after round one. Jonas, 18 wins, 11 finishes. Back, 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 back. I have a good one there. Uh, uh, nah, so now, nah, so now. Yeah. The right hand is there every time because his hands are down. So look for the shots. That, but you got to be faster with your punch. You got to be faster with your jab. You got to be faster with your uh, my proceed. Don't look for power and don't be lazy with your jab. All right, let's go. Wait, my people. Getting set for round number two. Black trunks for Jonas Sultan, purple for Frank Gonzalez. Mike Goldberg, a powerful partner of the former world champion, Chris Algieri. Magic man in Italy with family. Knowing Paulie, it's, what, mid-morning? And he's watching these fights. And man, he talked about the aggressiveness of Sultan. And there it is on display. Honestly, that was a good call from the referee. He was landing some big shots. It was hard to see because Gonzalez was ducking his head so much, but those uppercuts were landing. Oh, there it is again. You can see why he has finished 11 of his 18 wins. And Chris, you said right at the top of the show, this kid is built for power. Yeah, very super explosive. But you know what, Goldie? It, 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 you can see that he's world class. He set that up with those. I mentioned the body shots in the last round. Straight shots to the body, get his man to bend over, time him with an uppercut. I mean, beautiful transition. Gonzalez has been stopped in two of his three losses. But they came against high-level opponents. 11-0, Emmanuel Rodriguez. And 15-1 and at the time, Saul Sanchez. Round number two, this one's scheduled for eight. Belts on the line tonight in our co-main and main event of the evening. You know, in the last fight with Dominic Valle and Alcalas, I was, I was talking about change of change of speed, change of pace. That's exactly what Jonas does really well. Jonas Sultan, he changes either he's very slow, he's methodical, he shakes you down, and then he just explodes out of nowhere. There it is again. 
slowly closes the gap and then explodes through with an uppercut. In the fighter meetings, Jonas was asked who was his idol. And, and, and the answer's got to be automatic if you're Filipino, right? Excellent <laughs> question. Yeah. Actually, of course, of course he said uh, Manny Pacquiao. But I, I like that he said, sir, Manny Pacquiao. Yes, that's, the, the Filipinos are very, yes. very respectful. He also said, if Manny's serious about the Olympics, and Jonas says, yeah, he could still do it. Yeah. Jonas probably voted for the president as well. Yeah, I mean, he probably did. <laughs> probably big, did. Big overhand right from Jonas. Just missed with the uppercut. He's got to be careful throwing that uppercut from so far away. I know he's explosive, but there's a lot of opportunities to counter that shot. He left it hanging out a little bit, didn't yeah, he, Chris? Yeah, a little bit. A yep. little bit. Yeah, toward the end of the round, it was getting a little more wild than it was earlier. Here we see the big overhand shots and switching up that with those right hands nicely, throwing the uppercut from, from pretty far away. But he already had his man; he's already chasing him. Down. That's why I said that was a good that was a good call by the ref there, because there were big shots landing. It was a bit of a delayed reaction, but he was getting hit with some big shots prior to that. And good mobility by Christopher Young too, getting out of the way. Yeah, smooth smooth angle change there <laughs> from the ref. There you go. Boom. Ole. Ole. Might have been a, a bullfighter in a past life. <laughs> Round number three. Our second of four fights for you tonight here on your boxing channel. Wednesday night fights on Pro Box TV. Sultan in the black. Purple trunks for Frank Gonzalez. Sultan came out with two very hard, stiff jabs to open up the round. Looking for that left hook to land as well. I mean, if you just look at Sultan's body, I mean, he's built, he's like a fire plug. He's yeah. built for to be explosive. Oh, good check hook there from Sultan, too, on the way out. Did his camp in Vegas three months at Knuckleheads Gym. Said he was extremely prepared for this, his ninth professional bout outside of his home country, his fourth here in the United States. Ooh, good right hand downstairs. And there's that leaping uppercut. Again, Goldie, like we said, that's coming from very far out. T.F. Gonzalez is able to do anything with that if he continues to be a bit wild. There's a good flurry by Frank Gonzalez. Nice combination of the lateral movement there. Started with the jab. Definitely has his legs underneath him now. Nickname means the Punisher. El Castigator. Made his professional debut in the Dominican Republic. He has fought in Mexico, DR, and Colombia, and of course, here in the U.S. One minute on the clock, round number three. Gonzalez trying to establish some type of offense here in this round. So he's having a good round of uh, boxing here, although he just ate a big overhand right go. on the inside. When he fires out that Whee! lateral movement with the jab and he keeps those hands moving, he's having some success here. Because again, like I said about Sultan, he's, he's so explosive, but he's got two very distinct speeds. Fast and faster? <laughs> no, really, he's like asleep and explosive. Yes, <laughs> That's yes. all he really does. See, if you take advantage of those of those downtimes, you can win parts of rounds and, and perhaps take rounds against a guy like a guy like Sultan. Either the slider or the fastball, right? Yeah, basically. This one's scheduled for eighth super bantamweight matchup. Ooh, nice change of fire. Takes the right hand, comes back with a power jab. Saw the right wasn't going to land and adjusted appropriately. Change ups on the fly. Yep. Oh, oh. very late punches there. Oh, I 
gets a stern warning, as he should. And Gonzalez unfazed right in front of us. Half a step back, come. Bah, 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 bah. Half a step back, come. Bah, 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 bah. All day. He can't touch you. Faster. Bad intention. Faster, all right? Take a look at that action from the end of the round here. The explosion from Sultan climbing the body, right hand down low, comes up with a power jab, and then a right uppercut, which was considerably late after the bell. Then he got a stern warning as, a, as he walked back to his own corner. Sultan, the former IBF super flyweight yeah. intercontinental champion. Right. One, one, two. One, one, two. Okay, all day. Gonzalez has fought for both the Feta Centro and Latino <laughs> title at Bantamweight. The battle continues. Round four. The corner of Gonzalez says the 1-1-2 one, one, is there all day. And, and, and not that I can't agree with them. But again, you've got a very explosive guy in front of you that's throwing punches from crazy angles. Sultan, also the former WBO Intercontinental Bantamweight champion. That's just a couple of years ago. Oh, that uppercut that he throws on the inside. And he shortens that thing up. That, that's really hard to see. But you can see the depth of Gonzalez's game and why he has fought for some high-level regional belts as well. Oh, absolutely. He's very capable. He knows what he's doing there. He knows the game plan. He's just got a guy in front of him that's very difficult to deal with. And extremely elite. Again, he held back on that right, landed the left beautifully. Oh, yeah, I love that. I love how he does that. He changes, you know, a guy who's so explosive, he would have changed at a dime like that and switch it up. That's impressive. That's a pre impressive athletic maneuver. Try to freeze your opponent with your own paws, right? Yeah, being able to change direction like that. I mean, that's, that's a, like I said, it's a very athletic move. Just a power frame on the body of one punch, Zorro, 32-year-old Jonas Sultan. Hold it. Gonzalez saw that one coming. Frank Gonzalez fought Shakir Stevenson as an amateur many years ago. Shakir now 20 and 0, 10 knockouts. And now the fight is locked in against Frank Martin, so that's good news for boxing fans. I like that fight. Actually, if you can't get with any of the big dogs, fight one of these young, young killers out there. Yep. And that's, that's what Shakur is doing. I like it. For the vacant WBC Lightweight World Championship with Devin Haney's plans to move to 140. Nice timing overhand right from Sultan catching Gonzalez on the way in. Final 30 seconds, round number four. He's not, he's not the prettiest boxer in the world, but he is effective. Ten seconds, Makes bell. it work. Again, leaps in, adjusting on the fly, and connecting with a hard left. Sultan's done a great job of mixing up his right hands. Here we see the right hand over the top as Gonzalez steps in with his own jab. Beautifully timed punch there. He's been throwing the uppercut. We saw that early in round number two. Now he's switching it to the overhand right, having success with both. Probox TV, your boxing channel. We have launched, evolved, relaunched, grown, evolved, and we're adding Wonderful elements, 24-7, 365, your boxing channel, every single day. If the best defense is a great offense, then that's exactly what One Punch Zorro is all about. Because he has given Frank Gonzalez no space 
in which to establish his own offensive drives. I mean, he's so explosive, he makes guys gunshot. They don't know where he's coming from. His angles, his explosion, his change of, of speed and pace. And I'm not gonna lie, Chris, the, the stripes on the, the shorts of Frank Gonzalez, they got me more excited for Sunday, who day to Bengals at the Browns to start the season. Uh, you, you would think of that, looking at those shorts. I definitely would. <laughs> A guy like me doesn't, doesn't even see that. No. Nope. <laughs> and the Bengals did wear the white a couple times, but we'll get back to boxing, I promise. Oh, I like that right hand, <laughs> that right hand downstairs from Sultan. As Gonzalez moves to the left once again. Oh, and then he switches it right to that uppercut. That one to the body this time. So with that constant pressure and the change-ups, if you will, almost mid-movement, mid-punch, what does Frank Gonzalez do to get offensive, Chris? You know, with a guy like Sultan, where you have those distinct on and off periods in the rounds, you've got to take advantage of when he's off and, and stay busy with volume and movement and using those feints to try and get that first explosive move out of him. But then also, you got to look to time it with the distance. He's a shorter guy, he's exploding, he's jumping in with those uppercuts from the outside. You put a right hand on that, he'll knock himself out. Right. But it's staring down the barrel of the gun because you got a guy who's throwing big power at you. Big time. Just missed with the uppercut. But that's why fainting is so important, especially when you got a guy who's twitchy like Sultan is. You get that first move out of him at a distance, so you get you have time to make the adjustment. The loss in the interim WBO bantamweight title fight to Paul Butler was in Liverpool. Sultan trying to set himself up oh. right back at the top of the ladder. Big punches. Christopher Young's going to have a conversation with both fighters. That should have been a legit knockdown, but he got hit with two shots while he was down. This, yeah. this could be a real issue. His knee hit the canvas, didn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That was, yep. that was a knockdown. It was, it, was a, it was a left hook on the inside. But there was two hard shots that came back from Sultan while Gonzalez was down. Yeah, five minutes. Five minutes. In five minutes. Take a look at exactly what happened here. It's a big left hook on the inside that catches Gonzalez. Goes down, gets hit. One, two extra shots as his knee was down. Knockdown. Knockdown legit. Okay, keep it clean, okay? Buck, come in. Right back to that left hook comes Sultan. And after the weight and giving Gonzalez time, to recover from being hit once, not twice, when he was down, Chris, two points taken from Jonas Sultan. Yeah, that's, I told you that was, that was gonna be something big. That's, yep. that's, a, that's, a, that's a massive foul. Sultan trying to make it so it doesn't matter how many points you take off, because he's looking for that knockout here. Two-point deduction from the Filipino here. That was it, watch your way out. In this round, as he continues to put pressure on Frank Gonzalez. Ten seconds. Oh, boy. Ten seconds. If the right hand wasn't doing enough damage, Sultan comes out with the left hook this round, finds a home for that. Let's watch it again. Yeah, I mentioned that the right hands were so successful all night long. It was the left hook that had Gonzalez in a world of trouble in that last round. Here we see the uppercut, then left hook there. Catches him, and then some shots as the knee was down. In defense of Sultan, the angle he was at and how low that Gonzalez has been bringing his head down all night long, he may not have seen the knee. But regardless, the deductions were warranted. Ooh, big overhand shot. Also, the time for, for recovery was warranted as well. Yeah, you see what I mean, Goldie? Like from yeah. that angle, because he was so low, yes. 
it might have been hard to see that back knee was down. Everyone always quick to criticize any type of official or referee. Great job, great command of the ring by Christopher Young. Giving the time, as you said, Chris, for Gonzalez to recover and the two-point deduction from Sultan in the black. Purple trunks for Frank Gonzalez. Two points are not, though, partner. He's still way down. Yeah, absolutely. And I couldn't agree more what you said about the rep. I mean, he handled that, he handled that great. I mean, he slowed everything down. He told the corner to quiet. Yeah, I got this. Took command, exactly like you said. Fight scheduled for eight. Our co-main event. We've got a belt on the line. Our main event of the evening. We've got a belt on the line. And in this matchup, we have a man who has had two regional belts, fought for two world titles, against an opponent who has also fought for some high-level regional belts. So great talent here on a Wednesday night on Pro Box TV. Sultan, the two-time world title challenger. Sultan proving once again, he is just a difficult guy to deal with. Unorthodox, powerful, explosive, fit, and durable. It's been in a lot of long fights. 24 bouts, 171 rounds coming into tonight. It's an average of about seven rounds per fight. So as powerful as he is, a lot of his finishes have come in the latter part of his fights where he has systematically broken down his opponents. I mean, I, honestly, watching him here tonight, I'm not surprised. He's, he's obviously got great fitness. He's still explosive no here in, in round number six. No I got it. I mean, his last two finishes, one in 21, one in 2019, were both in the seventh round. One in the seventh of an eight-rounder, one in the seventh of a ten-rounder, Chris. Yeah, and I was mentioning that Carlos Calabayo fight, which did go ten. He scored, like, I believe four knockdowns. Wow. Five knockdowns in that fight. Oh, good work there from Gonzalez. The ninth left hook on the inside. And mentally, Sultan hasn't changed his approach at all even with the two-point deduction. He no. knows I, he, he knows in his heart he might have been overzealous, but he's staying within his game. Yeah, hasn't deterred him at all. He knows what his game plan is. He's just trying to land power shots. It's, it's, whether it's the right, it's the left, it's the uppercut. He's making everything work. September 20th, we are right back here live on Pro Box TV. And what a lineup we have that night, including the 10 rounder as Lester Martinez returns to Pro Box TV, ready to put up a show. Big fight nights, big fights still to come, and a good fight right in front of us, right here, right now. And we saw the shot of Tyson Fury. I have been watching the reality series, and the Gypsy King is more of a trip than I even really knew he was. <laughs> He's something else. Very eye-opening shot. Yes, it is. You get a little, a little view into the the headspace of, of yeah the heavyweight champ Tyson Fury. And with that many children, you know, you know it's craziness anyway. I can see why he wants to get to the gym. Wants to get away from all that, all that hectic fatherhood. Seventh round of this eight rounder. Quick hands from Gonzalez. Watch the way up. Watch go. the heads here. Coming dangerous and close on the inside. Especially you got a guy like Sultan who's so murky jerky. Even on the inside, explosive, easy to get caught with a headbutt. 
You know, whenever Gonzalez has some success throwing those hands on the inside, it's just, you know, it's the power and the brute force of Sultan that Young is here, Young is here. levels the playing field. And Gonzalez, 26-year-old with a 12-3 and three record. And his setbacks have come against a 15-1 and one fighter, an 11-0 and oh, fighter. And way back in 2018, early in his career, an unbeaten foe, as Gonzalez was at the time. Oh, no, he's, he's obviously a capable boxer. Yes. He's, he's trying to utilize and, you know, his skills and, and, and use his strategy and game plan. He just got someone in front of him who's just got more power, he's more explosive, he's got way more experience, he got more rounds under his belt, like you had mentioned last round. Not to mention, he's in phenomenal shape, and he, he wants another title shot. 55 rounds coming in for Gonzalez. 171 wow. for Sultan. I would say the greatest intangible is experience. And, and during that process of experience in the evolution of a fighter, you're able to react to the things that you didn't know how you would react to before they happen in fight three, 10, 14, whatever it is, Chris. And tonight, Sultan gets deducted two points, but he's still full force. Yeah. I mean, you don't know what you don't know. And Sultan's been been around the block. Yeah, he knows a lot, and he's been there before. Once again, you said it way more economically than I did. Thank you. Good punches landed by Gonzalez. Good answer on the counter by Sultan. Actually, one of the better shots that Gonzalez landed all night long. Actually backed Sultan up. Let go. You're the free. There you go. Oh, good double left hook on the inside from Sultan. Sultan has never been stopped in his professional career. Body in a nasty uppercut late in the round. You talk about that changeup. He throws a straight right hand to the body and then comes right back with the right hand, doubling up a, a rear hand. Not an easy thing to do. Saying, go do it. Be the old Frank. Touch him up. All right. Frank Gonzalez, a huge fan of the late great Kobe Bryant. He's got the purple trunks on, by the way. Kobe hit a lot of late shots to win games, to win titles. See if Gonzalez has something that he can utilize here in the final two minutes and 45 seconds of this eight round fight. Yeah, the coach Gonzalez was asking, How bad do you want it? You're going to need two, three attacks in a row. And he's not wrong, but I don't know. I mean, Sultan is shown to be very durable. Gonzalez hasn't really shown that kind of power. And Sultan, as I mentioned earlier, Chris, never been stopped. That's another important point. In 171 and counting go, rounds. Right but also, the, the more that Gonzalez lets those hands go, the more opportunities there are for Sultan to hit him with the big power that he has. Mike Goldberg, former world champion Chris Algieri, here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. The Magic Man in Italy with his family. Paulie, enjoy the time away. We will see you very, very soon. Oh, big left hook to the liver. Oh, and a left hook upstairs from Sultan. Man, the, the constant pressure of Sultan. Ultra impressive in so many ways. Starting with just his physical condition. Oh yeah, he got it's it's go, incredible go. fitness. I mean, I've seen that in past fights too. You know, he was 12 and 12 in his last fight. Yep. He went 10 in a very high clip in the fight before that, which is the fight that I called against Caraballo. I mean, he's been scheduled for 12 rounds eight times, Chris. So you can see why he has put so many miles on inside the squared circle. 
Yeah, I mentioned a few rounds ago, the style that he employs, it makes you gun shy as an yes. opponent. And we're seeing that because Gonzalez, who's trying to throw more this round, is getting hit more. And that's, you know, that, that's the issue. When you don't know where the punches are coming from, it makes you want to keep them at home. And his opponent can't get the offense on the field, literally. Yeah, literally. I mean, yeah, look, look at the real estate of where they're, where they're, they're fighting or playing. Yep. To uh, your middle. Gonzalez trying to leave it all in. The Pro Box TV ring tonight, and he has done so. A one punch Zorro has landed about 100 or more. I always like to watch the feet of fighters when they're in the ring, and, and you'll notice that whenever they are on the inside, the physical strength of Sultan keeps Gonzalez on his heels. He's just so no, no, strong no, no, in the no, no, inside, no, 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 no. which makes it very difficult to put any power on those shots. And, I mean, you look at the frame of Sultan, but also the legs and the strength and the power and explosion. Hope y'all get out of that. He looks strong from his neck to his heels. Yep. And he has fought that way as we approach the final seconds of this eight round matchup. No, no, no. Sultan with a big one there. They go the distance. Frank Gonzalez and Jonas Sultan. of a feeling out round to round number one, but round two, it was like Sultan Jonas. Jonas Sultan was shot out of a cannon. I mean, he landed big overhand rights and uppercuts that had Gonzalez in trouble. Scored the first knockdown of the fight there in round number two. Round three is more of the same. That explosion from Sultan Jonas was very impressive all night long. His change-ups. Gonzalez, though, he knows his way around the ring. Was boxing well from the outside. He just had trouble dealing with the awkward power of Sultan all night long. Sultan came back. He started to find some success with the left hands. It was that left hook there that had Gonzalez in trouble. Put him down to a knee, and then two late hits came <coughs> in. Some vicious shots. The referee took control, took a two points away from Jonas, and gave Gonzalez time to recover. And then these guys were throwing bombs to the end. But for the most part, I mean, Sultan was in control with that, like I said, that awkwardness, that, that power, and that explosion all night long. Good scrap between these two. They go the distance with the official decision. Beatrice Kalis. After three rounds of pure products, this is the final decision. Después de vueltas de puro products, esta es la decisión oficial. And the winner, by way of unanimous decision, el ganador, por decisión unánime. So Unanimous decision victory for Jonas Sultan. His Pro Box TV debut. Coming up next, our co-main event of the evening for the vacant WBA Fedecentro Super Featherweight title. William Foster III and Misael Lopez. Foster was set to headline here on Pro Box TV 57 days ago. Tonight, he's in the co-main event with a title on the line. Mike Goldberg, Chris Algieri, great to be with you again on Wednesday night. William Foster the third, 15 and 0, nine finishes, the silent assassin. He has had a spectacular start to his pro career. Absolutely, and you know, we were supposed to have him on our, our show a couple, yeah. a couple months back. It didn't work out. His opponent had some, some health issues. I was really looking forward to having him on here because he is the definition of high risk, low reward, which is why he hasn't been that active. Yep. Probox TV is made for people like this, so I'm really looking forward to this fight. When asked about that, he was set to be in our main event against Fredman Mercayo, who was 16-1. He said, yeah, nobody wants to fight me, including Mercayo. So illness or not, 
Foster still got a body shot in there. But listen, this this, this matchup's awesome. Yeah. This, this literally has the chance to steal the show tonight. I'm really looking forward to this fight. I've watched a lot of Misael Lopez. He's a very talented guy. I think this is going to be a barn burner. Well, let's talk a little bit about Misael Lopez. 14 and three, five finishes. What a pleasant young man to talk to in yes. the fighter interviews and a true fan of the sport. Yeah, both these guys are actually really pleasant to deal with. But yes, no, Miss Lopez can really fight. Um, he's been in with, with top competition. Yep. And he's just, I mean, he is brimming with confidence coming into this fight. He's got the talent to do it, too. I mean, it's one of those fights. You look at the record, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, well, I, I got this guy. Whoa, 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 hold on. We, we got a real fight on our hands. He is a Mexican now fighting and living in Denver, Colorado. So he's got that spirit, that heart. He's also conditioning yeah. at altitude, so the motor's going to be unlike we've seen before. I mean, he's, he does have a great motor, and he's one of those guys he builds. If yeah. he gets confidence early, watch out. You're going to have a long night ahead of you. So I'm curious to see how this fight's going to start. So it is for the vacant WBA Fedecentro Super Featherweight belt, the belt in which William Foster III thought he was going to fight for a couple of weeks ago here on Pro Box TV. He's about to do so in our co-main event of the evening. That is still to come, as is our main event. But we also have some fight previews. And we also want to know why nobody wants to get in the ring with Dimitri Bivol. And to the great Teddy Atlas, I ask you, why has it been so hard for Dimitri Bivol to find another opponent? Because he's too damn good. Yeah. And you can't get rich fighting him. <laughs> Look, there are fighters out there that are too good for their own good because they just know how to do one thing, win and box at an incredible level. And then the real shame, I'll tell you what, uh, they, they also politicize him, him being from Russia. They also throw that in the mix. Obviously, we are set for our co-main event of the evening, and it is great to have Teddy Atlas as part of the Pro Box TV family. William Foster III, Misael Lopez. Fight scheduled for 10 rounds. Our tail of the tape for this title fight. 29-year-old fighting out of East Haven, Connecticut against the 27-year-old who is not only fighting out of Denver but sporting his Nuggets jersey after they won the NBA title. Four-inch height advantage for Foster, but the reach is virtually identical. With the official introductions, once again, here is Beatrice Kalis. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a co-main event of the evening, damas y caballeros. Este es el evento co-estelar de esta noche. Ten rounds in the super featherweight division for the WBA Feather Center title. Diez vueltas en la división peso super pluma por el título Feather Center de la AMB. Los jueces son the judges are. Brian Gary, Michael Ross, and Dennis Deben. Referee in charge, Michael De Jesus. Introducing the red corner, La Esquina Roja, wearing red and black, vestido de negro y blanco. Su peso oficial, 130 libras, his official weight, 130 pounds. Tonight, he enters the ring on the feet as a pro with 15 victories and nine knockouts. Esta noche, entra al ring invicto como profesional con 15 victorias y nueve knockouts. The East Heaven, Connecticut, William. The silent assassin Foster the Sun. Introducing the blue corner, El Esquina Azul, wearing blue, white, and red, vestido de azul, blanco, y rojo. Su peso oficial, 129.4 libras. His official weight, 129.4 pounds. With a pro record of 14 victories, three losses, and five knockouts. Con un record profesional de 14 victorias, tres derrotas, y cinco knockouts. From Denver, Colorado, Misael Lowe. All right, guys, the rules were told to you in the locker room and in the corner. You know what I expect. Touch gloves if you want to. If not, go back to your corner. 
10 round super featherweight fight, our co main event of the evening. William Foster III, Misael Lopez. Here we go. It's time to fight. Red and black trunks for the silent assassin, William Foster III, blue, white, and red trunks for Misael Lopez. Big smile on the face of William Foster III before the round started. That's something I've actually seen him do with fights quite a bit. It seems like he has fun out there. High risk, low reward. It's actually a compliment in the fact that Foster can't get opponents inside the ring with him. Somewhat of Teddy Atlas talking about with Dimitri Bebel on a different level, of course. First fight since July 23rd of last year for William Foster, 411 days. Set to headline, as we mentioned, 57 days ago here on Pro Box TV. That fight fell out just moments before we went on the air, Chris. Yeah, that, that was really unfortunate. We were looking forward to have him on our air. Like you, you had said, he's not been very busy, so he was extremely excited to be back. And that fight fell through. That's got to be heartbreaking. Big right hand there from William Foster III. But moments before that, Miss Ayala had landed a really nice left hook to the liver on the inside. You know, you had mentioned that there was a four height, four inch height advantage yeah. for Foster, but not a reach advantage. That means there's a lot of real estate to cover with shorter arms. That body's gonna be open. High volume puncher is Lopez. Foster very explosive. Displays athleticism and quickness. Oh, big overhead like right, right here. You know, in my notes for Foster, I have, I have uh, athletic, like you just said, but also varies up his punches really well. He's very creative with his offense. Mixes up his punches beautifully. And we're seeing that already here in round one. Battle-tested has beaten three unbeaten fighters already. In his career at 15 and 0, the counter by Lopez. Watch for that sh that short right hand from Foster the third. He's been landing some really nice sneaky right hands early on here. He says, everybody dodges me, even Mikhail dodged me. 15 seconds, round one, scheduled for 10. Misael Lopez is not gonna dodge him, he's here to fight. You got that right. since he was 10 years old. Break him down, he's already, he's about to give up in that round, he's hurt. The corner Lopez, his father Ebenezer, making sure those cuts don't cost him. Lopez has lost two straight, but he told us in the fighter meetings, Chris, he made costly mistakes in those last two fights. First, leaving it in the hands of the judges, but secondly, a fight in which he was winning in round 10, he got stopped with 20 seconds on the clock. And yeah, that was against uh, Sagawa, who actually yes. Foster holds a, a win over early in his career. Gave Sagawa his first loss, actually. And speaking of big wins, Misael Lopez, defeated Orlando Gonzalez, and Gonzalez and Romero Cicena still amongst the top candidates for fight of the year here on Pro Box TV. Yeah, that fight was amazing. I, I loved calling that fight. That's a big win for Misael Lopez. Orlando Gonzalez can really fight. Lopez turning it up here in round two. 
Who else can really can fight, Golden? Yep. These two guys. You, you got, got that right. right here. I just love how calm Foster stays. Picks his spot, stays long. I mean, Foster said straight out, I'm not underestimating him. I hope he is not underestimating me. More smiles from Foster. Foster, like I said, watch out for those sneaky right hands. But listen, Lopez, watch out for those sneaky body shots. He's been sneaking in some really nice left hooks under the elbows of Foster. And I mentioned those shorter arms of, yeah. of Foster with that long body, that long torso. Big target. Family business for the Fosters. Grandfather was the first, Father William the second. Pro boxer from 2003 to 2007. William's older brother, Charles, 33-year-old Southpaw, has a record of 22 and one. Lopez lands three good left hands, a jab, a hook, and then another jab. And listens a smile from Foster III. Big swing and a miss. Lopez having a good round here. Yes. Found his range nicely. Shots, right hands from both men. They have brought it to Pro Box TV here tonight. Cole main event of the evening. Oh, there's that left hook to the liver again from Lopez off the ropes. You could hear it. Oh, good right hand from Foster upstairs. Radovoye Kalajic, Mickey Ellison still to come oh! in our main event of the evening. Let's see how long this one lasts, Chris. Oh, man, good left hook, right hand combination from Foster from the outside. Catches Lopez square on the chin. Took it well, though. We got ourselves a fight. Yeah, we do. That whole round was a replay, but we're going to take a look at some of the action here. Big swing and a miss there from Foster. That uppercut just misses. Lopez threw a nice left hook in there. Nicely timed shot there. That's what I mean about, about Foster. He's so calm. He's able to pull the trigger and land punches like that from awkward angles and lands two more shots upstairs. Beautiful stuff from Foster. Oh, and that was my, that was that punch of the round. I think it stole it on my scorecard. That left hook, right hand combination that landed squarely on the chin of Lopez. Beautiful punch there to close out round two for William Foster the third. The battle continues. Blue, white, and red trunks for Lopez. Now living in Denver, Colorado. Red and black for William Foster the third. Oh, High pace set oh, early man. here in this round as well. Lopez has got some chin, because from what I've seen on Foster on tape, he can punch, and he's landed some really clean right hands so far. Foster the third said, I will get him uncomfortable in the first two rounds. He'll be broken by the third. That pace of the prediction may be a little aggressive. We'll find out. A little aggressive, but he started out round three looking really good. So maybe it's three, and then he'll be broken in the fourth if Foster has his way. Yeah, because Lopez started out round number two really good, found his range on the inside. But Foster came on real strong at the end of the round. He started round three even stronger. Foster landing to the body and to the chin already here in just over a minute in the round. Lopez needs to get his back off the ropes because he's getting tattooed with right hands over the top. Foster very technically sound. Yeah, yeah, very fundamental. Um, punches are, are very technical, very sharp. Thrown correctly, go back to home quick. Nice feint there. Slide in, slide out. William, his older brother Charles, started very, very young with their father training him and then Dad said, we got to hand you up to Luis Rosa Sr. And he has been with him for 
Well, he's 29 years old now, so almost 20 years. The answer from Lopez. This is where Lopez is dangerous. I mentioned in the open with him, he's the kind of guy he builds off confidence. So if he gets comfortable, you got to deal with him all night long. Good body shot there on the inside from Lopez. And a right hand over the top. You can see that left has landed right where it did again. Swelling under the right eye of Misael Lopez. Man. Man, Foster just he's he's turns hurt. that hit. Just giving him a count here. I'm assuming he's saying that the ropes kept him up. Yep. And Foster coming right in to try to finish this fight. Well, his prediction was the third round, right? Yep. Well, it was uncomfortable in the first two rounds, broken by the third. You see why I was excited about this kid? Absolutely. <laughs> He's still wobbling. Walking to the road. Walking to the corner. He's still wobbling. Very dominant round from William Foster the third. It's those right hands, and Lopez was trying to pull back straight, and he was getting hit clean with those hands over the top. Goldie, you had mentioned how fundamentally sound, how technical the punches of William Foster the third are. It's true. He gets his head offline so beautifully when he throws that right hand. Offense and defense mixed together. And that was, was that right hand is what's been giving Lopez trouble all night long. That's it. That, that's what I mean. Gets his head offline, drops that right hand. He's punching you with good offense, but he's also invisible to your counterattack. Man. Good pressure. Good sharp technical punches. Great attitude too. Yes. There's a lot of mental pressure on him. And he's having fun out there. Yeah, Smile on the face of William Foster the third. Lopez, I would imagine, still trying to recover from that big third round barrage of punches that continues here early in the fourth. Oh, man. And that's one thing that I noticed from Foster, too, watching his tape. Yes, he's a good puncher, but he's also a volume guy. That's, that's really yes. difficult to deal with. So I'm here to showcase my boxing skills and my evolution. This is just the beginning of my fight journey. And you know what this tells me? A guy who's in, inactive but looks this good, he's been living in the gym. Yes. He has not missed a beat. And he's been in training camp for an extra 57 days because he thought he was fighting back on July 12th here in our main event of the evening. Great point, Goldie. Yeah. Back to back training camps. Took no time off. High risk, no reward. You can see why a lot of fighters don't want to get in here with William Foster the third. You know, the, the, the reason I had said that is because that's what he said the first correct, time we interviewed correct. him. Yeah. And I brought that up and I said, I agreed with him. I said, you are a high risk, low reward guy. He has got Lopez in a very defensive mode. Oh, good double body shot there from Lopez on the inside. They're being warned for holding. No warning for the late hit from Lopez, punching on the break, but big smile from Foster. Foster with that smile on his face. His coach said he's skillful, smart, he listens, and he can make adjustments quickly. Nice uppercut. And again, first the right hand, then the left. Lopez biting down on the mouthpiece, though. He's been hit with some big shots all night long, though. Big swings, bigger misses. Whoa. There's that uppercut that Foster tried a few rounds ago. Missed that one as well. Foster gets his head off center very well. Yeah, it's a very fundamentally sound. 
Lopez winging that left hook upstairs. That's been a good weapon for him, especially downstairs. But this is where he'd not want to be. When he has his back on the ropes, it's all William Foster the third. Nice body shot on the inside from Lopez. The battle will continue. I spoke about those left hands from Lopez. That's a beautiful double left hook, both on the liver. You saw Foster drop his elbow down. Here we see that punch off the break from Lopez. The ref was breaking them because Foster was holding. And Lopez took the opportunity to crack him on the chin one. Really? Yeah. Scheduled for 10 rounds for the vacant WBA Fedecentro Super Featherweight Belt. All of Lopez's fights, born in Mexico, living in Denver now, have been in the U.S. Tonight is first fight in the state of Florida, and of course his first here on Pro Box TV. Oh, good counter hook there from Lopez as Foster Ju uh, the third rushes in. Red and black for Foster the third, blue, white, and red for Misael Lopez. Now we mentioned Lopez conditioning. He's one of those guys. He's never out of the fight because he's got a great fitness level and he builds off of anything that he gets done. And when his confidence grows, he's a very dangerous guy. Trains at altitude in Colorado. He does his cold plunge and his conditioning together. He told us he swims in the coldest of rivers. Taking full advantage of where he lives. You got that right. Although snowboarding did not go well for him. He shared that with us. Yeah, not a, not a good <laughs> idea for, for a professional fighter. I always said I'm not doing any extreme sports until I'm fully retired. Got to keep that body in condition. He said it was hard as heck. I couldn't stop. He said, I'm a professional, I'm a professional athlete. I can't, I yeah, can't stop. Yeah, I should be able to do this. Oh, big right hand upstairs from William Foster. I'm pretty sure he could beat up all those snowboarders that were out there that day. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> as long as he's not standing on a snowboarder. Correct. Oh, big shots inside the both guys. Lopez on the attack. Stiff, straight right hand down the middle for William Foster. And great body work from Lopez. It's a great round for Misael Lopez. Ooh. I would like to know what William Foster III does for getting his hands conditioned, because he's taken some really big body shots and has not shown any worse for wear. And we saw the one on the replay where he didn't even flinch. Yeah, right in the liver. Oh, good right hand from Lopez as he slides out. My body hurts from watching the replay, Chris. <laughs> Good round here, back and forth action. Oh, big left hook over the top. Lopez takes it really well. Lopez said 126 or 130. Happy to compete, he said. Moving forward in his career, 126 might be his true home, but he'll take big fights like this at 130 every single night. Yeah, I could see him doing being better equipped physically for 126. You know, Foster is a 30 pounder. He's a big 30 pounder. Yes, he is. Thus, the height advantage. Lopez is right back in this fight. I need that from you. That's what I need. That's what we need to win this fight, man. See your back and twitching. You need that. Get that way out. Oh. Center of the ring. Rip those fucking body shots. Come to the head. But I need that head movement in the fucking pocket. Do not let it hit you with that fucking two no more. Just act like you're at the end of the round. You're slipping it. You're getting under it. Start pulling it in back with that shoulder. 
tienes con aire, ya no te vienes con aire. Good action in that last round. Both guys digging deep on the inside. Lopez had a much better round. Bit of a get back round from the previous several. And, and the corner is right. That's what they need in order to win yes. this fight. And listen, Goldie, we got half of this fight to go. Yeah. And we've talked about the conditioning of Lopez, or at least where he does his conditioning at altitude. That's not to say that we expect William Foster the third not to be in great shape, but it is worthy of mention but when you're training at altitude. Lopez is the kind of guy, though, if you step off the gas at all, no. he digs himself back into this fight. You know, this could get very interesting down, down the stretch. This is where we separate the men from the boys, as they say. Big fight, great camp, no excuses, Lopez said. This is my shot back to contender mode. Mike Goldberg with the former world champion, my powerful partner, Chris Algieri, the magic man, will be back with us in two weeks. And pretty much every day with you as well. He is in he's Italy not, visiting family. For me. <laughs> he's got to deal with me every day. Or is it the other way around? <laughs> That's why it's a sparring session. Big swing and a miss from Lopez. Connects there. Nice slide with the shoulders, though, from Foster. Big right hand upstairs from Lopez. Lopez bringing the heat here in round number six. Let's see if that body work early on from Lopez is going to pay off in the second half of this fight. So much for being broken by the third. Yeah, no, uh, breaking a guy like Lopez, I don't know if that's, a, that's an option. Lopez, a little slip and riff. Deep breath in from Lopez after that shot. Lopez and Foster the third, loving the energy here inside our Pro Box TV world headquarters. Lopez needs to keep those hands up, but he's circling away. Yep. Foster, Foster the third, just too long, too tall to back out with your hands down. They're having fun. Just another Wednesday night of great fights here on your boxing channel. That was a really nice left hook from Lopez as a counter over the top. I told you about Lopez, he builds confidence. Yes. As he goes, he's really coming on, throwing some big heat. What a fight! Great action that round. Another good round for Lopez, especially at the end of the round. He's really coming on, hyping up the crowd, hyping up himself. He builds off of his successes in fights. I've seen this time and time again. Very difficult guy to break. And that's exactly what Foster planned to do tonight. Haven't seen it yet. William Foster, the third, a perfect 15 and 0 record. Lopez, 14 and 3. WBA Fedecentro Super Featherweight Belt on the line in our co main event. Red and black trunks for Foster, the third Lopez in his Nuggets colors. Oh, good right hand to the body from Foster. Did see, again, Lopez, when his back is on the ropes. That's not the place he wants to be. Blue, white, and red. As Lopez, much like Chris has mentioned before, has built momentum. 
but Foster still happy to come forward. Yeah, Foster still, he's the more technically sound yes. guy, the bigger man, the, the bigger puncher of the two. Oh boy, and you see that power right there. Even a partially blocked shot from Foster the third moves Lopez halfway around the ring. Oh, but when his back's against the ropes and Foster lets those hands go with volume, very difficult guy to deal with. Oh, oh! Right in front of us, partner. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we got, uh, I got hit with some sweat. Yeah. Oh, part of the job. Got a little blood on the notes. Oh. Good counters now. See, Foster the third showing what kind of prospect he is, changing things up this round. Big right hand. Oh, as part of that combination. Yeah, it looks like he's starting to make Lopez wilt with these shots. And before that, Lopez, he led with that, that left to the body and stayed in that pose a little too long and ate a big right hand counter. Foster the third gaining that momentum back here in round number seven. Yeah, this is the most dominant Foster has been in the last couple of rounds. Lopez was having a couple of good rounds, get back rounds, but here comes Foster. Oof. Mixing things up nicely. Mm. Can't miss with that right hand this round. Round seven, co-main event scheduled for 10. Got him on the ropes again. Lopez to the body. Trade body shots there. Lisa, come on, we gotta work, 30 seconds. Oh, good over right there from Lopez. Mm. Little slip and rip, right hand connects for Foster. Another smile from Foster. 10 seconds. A lot to smile about this round. 10 seconds, guys. Lopez was building some serious momentum, Chris, but it was a very solid round for William Foster the third. Yeah, five and six, Lopez was, was coming on, was building momentum, but man, that was put to rest in round seven by William Foster the third. Here we see some of that work as Foster pins Misael against the ropes. This has been getting really good work done whenever the back of Lopez is against the ropes where Foster can unload with those value shots. And we saw good left hooks upstairs, right hands down low. Mixed things up and changed speeds very well that last round. Took the momentum back by, into his control. Eighth round of our co-main event. Mike Goldberg, Chris Algieri, Wednesday night fights. Pro Box TV. We don't promote boxers. We promote boxing. I think this is going to be a big round here. If Lopez can assert himself again like he did a couple rounds ago. Oh. Or if Foster can build off of what he did last round, this fight's pretty much over. Still to come, our main event of the evening. Radovoye Kalajic against Mickey Ellison for the WBA Continental North America belt. Ooh. There's that 3 2 combination from Foster. Catches Lopez as he slides out, lets his hands get drop a little bit as he circles. Gets caught quite often that way. Ooh, Foster, nice 1 2, and then the shot to the body. Right hand lands. Foster doing a really nice job of mixing things up. He's no oh boy, good wow. uppercut left to, to the liver. Backs Lopez up. That shot hurt. A lot of time on the clock here in this round. I don't know how 
Lopez took that shot. That that uppercut to the left hook to the Canelo punch, basically. Yeah. That's a that's a really difficult shot to deal with. Lopez was stopped by 10 and 1 Jordan White. And then you talked about the Sagawa fight with about 20 seconds left in the 10th and a fight he was winning. He got finished. Good opening right there from Lopez lands, but Foster comes right back. Again, I mentioned the power differential between the two. Foster definitely the heavier handed. Just a bigger guy, Chris. Yeah, bigger guy, heavier puncher. But Lopez got himself some heart. Both men do. Lopez actually does hit harder than his record suggests. Yeah. But Foster is the bigger puncher. As we watch this fight, and you see some of the shots that Lopez has landed, I was thinking the same thing, 14 wins, just five finishes. He's been in there against some terrible guys, obviously. Yeah, I, th I think it's more a testament to who he's been in with yes. than his actual punching power. Wow! Whoa. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hands up. The battle continues. been the same shot that we've seen all night long. It's yeah. that combination, obviously, that's been a shot that that Foster and his team have been working on. Cuts, cut, cutting the man off. Left hook, right hand, great combination for a tall guy. You know what he's actually built like is Diego Corrales. He's, yeah. got that, he's tall, but he's got the shorter shorter arms. He fights so well on the inside, too. There's that big right hand over the top. I kept mentioning how Lopez, when he circles out, he tends to drop that lead hand. There, he actually got caught in the middle of punching. But yeah, that's been a shot that's been landing consistently all night long, really from round number one. There, it was just, I mean, accumulation of punishment. Plus, it just being a clean shot. Beautiful right hand from Foster. End of the round, I mean, he could have had an opportunity to finish that off, but. Lopez enthusiastically telling Michael DeJesus, I'm ready, let's go, round number nine. Oh, big right hand again. He's wobbled. Wobbles Lopez. Oh, and a left hook. Right in front of us now, a right hand. Man, Lopez's game. One tough fighter. Foster continues to put a heavy pace on Misael Lopez, body shot after multiple landings to the head. Really smart change up there from Foster. Took the power off those punches, let his hands go, picking his spots, then throws a hard left hook to the body. Smart of him, he's been landing big shots, but you can change it up and force the ref to step in. He was looking for the home run hit there with the right hand. Oh, There it is. Big right hand. And the ref, that's it, he's seen enough. Yep, it is all over. Can't complain about that stop. Nope, not at all. William Foster the third stops Misael Lopez and moves to 16 and 0. Those big right hands, Chris. Here we're gonna see, stab jab to the body, beautiful overhand right. We talked about the technical proficiency of Foster all night long, that was a textbook combination. Stab jab down low, right hand right from the chin. No fat on that punch whatsoever. Throws it right from the guard position, overhand right. And really just a couple flurries there that cuffed the head of Lopez. He went down, but the ref had seen enough. He had taken enough big shots these last two rounds, really all night, but especially the last two rounds. What a show these two put on in our co-main event tonight, though. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those fights. I saw this on paper a few weeks ago, and I was like, oh, boy, we got a good fight. Yes. And sure enough, it, it, it lived up to it, but It really, looked like it was going to be one-sided early. It did, yeah. I was going to say, I was like, I, it really opened my eyes to how good William Foster is, because I, I have a lot of respect for Misael Lopez, Misael Lopez, but, I mean, Foster, especially early on, he just had his man figured out. 
and was coming on. Landed some big shots, especially when Lopez found himself on the ropes. He had his moments of success. Landed some good body shots on the inside. Is a tricky, tricky guy. Definitely capable. Definitely in great shape. But, man, that right hand was laser tonight. That thing over the top as a counter, as a lead, off the hook. There we saw see what I was talking about with Lopez on the inside, letting those hands go, ripping beautiful body shots. There we saw a nice right hand over the top. But we, we spoke about the size of Foster all night. It seemed like he just walked through everything. Even those body shots right yeah. on the liver. Scoring beautiful shots, just nothing on the face to show that he was being damaged by those shots. And on the other side, the damage being done by Foster was obvious. Big right hand puts Lopez down. I think that was the end of the seventh round, I believe. Yep. Oh, no, into the eighth into round. The eighth, and then in the ninth, that right hand again, bam. And then the ninth round, he just couldn't miss. And there, the ref had seen enough. And he gets his 10th win by knockout to make it official, Beatrice Calise. The official time. 58 seconds of round number nine, el tiempo oficial. 58 segundos del round número nueve. And the winner by technical knockout, el ganador por knockout técnico. William Foster! Nothing silent about the silent assassin tonight as he now owns that WBA Fedecentro Super Featherweight belt finishing Misael Lopez in round number nine. William Foster the third moves to 16 and 0. Coming up next, it is our main event of the evening. Most of the boxing world knows him as Hot Rod. Radovoye Kalajic back in the ring, right down the street from his home in St. Petersburg to take on the caveman, the Brit. 14 and four, Mickey Ellison. Scheduled for 10 rounds in the light heavyweight division with the WBA Continental North America belt up for grabs. Pro Box TV is your boxing channel. There's nothing else like this in boxing. We are a 24 seven boxing streaming network dedicated only to the sweet science. We provide boxing fans daily news delivered in print and in a never before seen video format from our state of the art studios in Florida. Along with daily talk shows every weekday, we also produce our own fights with our Wednesday night fight series, where we invite the best fighters who didn't make the cut for Showtime, ESPN, or DAZN, and want to prove they belong in the big ring. But there's a catch. They have to fight each other. No easy wins. That's right, 50-50 matchups. As we like to say, good fighters in great fights. Three events per month, 40 per year. Now, we aren't a promoter. We don't promote boxers. We don't compete with the championship networks. We cover and promote them all. We believe boxing should act as one and avoid being fragmented. We represent the fans and what they want. We promote boxing. We are your boxing channel. We are Pro Box TV. Chris Algieri, we are set for what should be a great main event, and we just gave you an idea what Pro Box TV is all about, and we give them that idea quite frequently. It's an absolute pleasure to be here again on a Wednesday night. Pauli Malinaggi having a good time in Italy. I would say we might be having a better time here in our world headquarters. Uh, I don't know about that, but <laughs> that's a nice thought, Goldie. Thank you. You know, that, there is some... Never mind. We'll be nice to Polly. We'll be nice to Polly. A couple of weeks ago, after our great fight card, we talked to Hot Rod, a man you know very well. He is in a mental state of almost revamping to where he was before. So close 
to being a world champion. Yeah, I mean, he, he's right back there. A, a win here tonight, and he, he's right back at the contention. And we fought for a world title against yep. Arthur Berbiev, who's, like I said, the, the demon of the division. Um, he has a very controversial loss to Marcus Brown, whom a lot of people thought that he won that. Uh, I guess she fought on my own card that, that night. So, yeah, I mean, this guy, he's, his only loss is to Berbiev. Guess what? Everybody who fought better be it's lost. And everyone got stopped. And so he and he was very clear, Chris, and, and it wasn't an excuse, but he said he was not prepared right. for that fight. He was coming off what was a career-threatening hand injury, and it was better be it. But he was not in the state, in the frame of mind, physically or mentally, where he really could put on the show that he wanted to put on that night. And then also to take the maturity of that and to go and train with Better Be Even, be a sparring partner, yeah. help him in his camp, and also learn as you go. I mean, listen, th th that's the amount of, of experience you get from working with guys like that that happened in my career takes you just to a next level. It gives you confidence. I'm really curious to see what he's going to do tonight. All right, Mickey Ellison, the Brit, wants to come here and steal the show from St. Petersburg, at least fighting out of St. Petersburg now. Hot Rod has never lost in Tampa. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. Serbia's Radovoj Kalajic, 32 years old. Mickey Ellison from the UK, one year his elder, one inch taller. Everything else is virtually identical. This fight, our main event for the WBA Continental North America belt. Once again, with the introductions, Beatrice Kalis. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Damas y caballeros, este es el evento estelar de esta noche. Ten round bout in the light heavyweight division. Diez vueltas en la división de peso semi pesado for the WBA Continental North America title. Por el Continental North America title de la AMB. Los jueces son, the judges are. Joe Brian Gary, and Michael Ross. Referee in charge, Christopher Young. And now, are you ready to feel the power of Provo? <laughs> Introducing the red corner, in the esquina roja, wearing black and red, vestido de negro y rojo. Su peso oficial, 174.4 libras, his official weight, 174.4 pounds, with a pro record of 27 victories, two losses, and 19 knockouts, con un record profesional de 27 victorias, dos derrotas y 19 knockouts. From St. Petersburg, Florida, Radimosh Hotbro! Introducing the blue corner, la esquina azul, wearing gray and black, vestido de gris y negro. Su peso oficial, 174.6 libras, his official weight, 174.6 pounds, with a pro record of 14 victories, four losses, and five knockouts. Con un record profesional de 14 victorias, cuatro derrotas, y cinco knockouts. From Darwin, Lackenspring, UK, Quite clean, catch him up. Ten round light heavyweight fight. Radovoye Kalajic and Mickey Ellison. And don't forget, Hot Rod told us he listens to your commentary when you ready? to improve. So when are you ready? give him some Bail. good stuff tonight. <laughs> or maybe he's going to give us some good stuff. Here we go. It is time to fight. Black trunks for Hot Rod, the caveman, Mickey Ellison, in the gray and black trunks. These are some big, light heavyweights. Big six time. 6'2", 6'3", 77 plus inch reach advantage for both of the men. In the fighter meetings, when Ellison was asked about his reach, he said, it's long. Yeah, I have a long reach. Yeah, I can see that. Hot rod, long, strong, two-fisted puncher. Very physical. 27 and two. 
with 19 finishes, 14 of his 19 knockouts, oh, by the way, have come in round number one. Hot Rod snapping a nice, nice quick jab right down the middle, a couple to the body, too. Ellison has been stopped just once in his professional career. This professional bout, 19 tonight. Nice hand down low from Ellison there. Backed Hot Rod up. Oh, big right hand. Kalajic extends through nicely. Spent three weeks in Canada sparring with Arthur Betterbiev. Said it was an invaluable experience. And Hot Rod has only had one fight oh. since 2019. And this is his first fight since mid-May of last year. So when we spoke to him a couple weeks ago, you could tell he was anxious to get back. Right now, he's taking some shots from Mickey Ellison. Nice, heavy-handed shots from Mickey Ellison there. Threw a nice overhand right over the shoulder, and there's some big left hooks, one upstairs, one downstairs. You can tell, he's got some heavy hands. He's not, not known as a puncher, but that right hand's got a little heat to it. Left hand of Hot Rod snaps the head of Ellison back. Kalajic with the triple jab. Yeah, Kalajic, this is definitely a, a different guy that I'm used to seeing. He's a little wild at times. Now he's working behind his jab, trying to set punches up. And round one in the books. Right now, right? Don't worry about too much. Just keep setting your jab. Let's see what he's got. Always run double and bring her over. So don't be bending over. Get back to that full out. Let him open up a little bit and run basic shit. Okay? Press. All right? Pretty deep. His Ooh. father, Marco, in his corner tonight, Mickey Ellison, right, we'll assisted by Phil Robinson. Don't be a big. Don't be a big. Don't wait on it. 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 He's sat there thinking the same about you. First fight here in the United States for the caveman, Mickey Ellison. Born in Serbia. The parents moved the family to the United States at a young age. Kalajic with a brother, a sister, family of five. Dad was a big Mike Tyson fan. Thus, Hot Rod grew up watching a lot of Iron Mike. Pushing forward nicely. Got some slick movement. But Chris, you've been in the gym with him. You already knew that. Yeah, no, he snapped a really nice jab. Uh, again, this is a, a different version that I'm used to seeing. He's a lot more fundamentally sound, setting things up with his jab, being defensively sound. You see some nice movement here. And he said about Mickey Ellison, he's a tough Englishman, back-to-back -back wins over undefeated fighters. He has taken down a 15 and old guy as well. He said both of us come forward, and he expects this not to be a sloppy fight. And early on, Hot Rod is right. And yeah, Mickey Ellison, he fights very much like a big guy. You know, yes. He pulls straight back. He doesn't really go under punches. He's got big overhand rights, big left hooks. Phil Robinson gave him the nickname, the caveman. He said straight out, because he fights like a prehistoric caveman. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's somewhat true. He gets square on the inside, doesn't mean getting hit. He's already got a, an abrasion on the nose, but he just wants to hit you before you hit him. Again, only, only five KOs in his 14 wins, but he's another one who seems like he punches harder than his record suggests. 
And in that fine British accent, he said he'll mix it up. He's got a little bit of everything, and he's not frightened to stand toe to toe. He said he can box at range, box inside southpaw, and upside down. <laughs> and upside yeah, down. That was, that. That, was, uh, that was a good one. I never yeah. heard that before. A lot of fun to talk to him. Hot Rod, also with a ton of personality. But serious business with a belt on the line here in our main event. You know, both of these guys, curiously, are circling into each other's right hands. They're both just going around in, in circles, ready for someone to throw a right hand. And notice how Kalaja's going to his left. Yep. Nikki's going to his own left. Interesting, because both guys have good right hands. See who's going to get there first. Nice jab again from Kalajic. Mm, beautiful jab, snaps the head back at Ellison. And again. Ten seconds, for bear. Oh, big left hook upstairs from Ellison. For bear. Oh. That's just round two, Chris. Oh, throwing some heat to close the round out. We will see you again in two weeks, as always, as promised, on our Wednesday Night Bites. Guatemala's Lester Martinez, 16-0 with 14 knockouts, returns here to Pro Box TV to take on 22-5 Lionel Lonnie B. Thompson, a five-time New York State Golden Gloves champion who has shared the ring with Hot Rod and also Sergei Kovalev. That and many others come your way Wednesday, September 20th, two weeks from tonight, on your boxing channel. You got a guy who fought Kovalev, you got a guy who fought Better BF. And we get to watch them battle here on Pro Box TV. Radovoye Kalajic, he is in the black trunks, gray and black trunks for the Brit, Mickey Ellison. Yeah, I've been I've been impressed with Mickey Ellison's left hook. It's it's not the prettiest thing, it's not the prettiest beaut in the world, but it's uh, it's coming in heavy and hard. He led a nice one at the end of that round, right between the guard of Hot Rod. Ellison, the 23rd opponent with a winning record that Hot Rod has faced. His record is 27 and two. Ellison is 14 and four. Both men using that long reach. Yeah, but the speed is very different. Yes. Hot Rod much quicker, much more explosive with that jab. You see that popping the head back of Ellison time and time again. Kalajic did tell us you're about to see Hot Rod point 2.0. And so far, Chris, you've been impressed. I have been. I mean, I've seen, he's been much more methodical, much, much more patient. Definitely cleaner. You know, I remember a much more raw guy than I saw in past fights and even in the gym. And, and he said that from his experience up in Canada, training with Better Bia, the world champ. He said, I stayed calm. I picked my shots. I learned lots. Great work that he wants to put on display here. Double jab lands. On the Brit, Blood. nicely done with the right hand. Blood from the nose of Mickey Ellis. Compliment to that snapping jab of Hot Rod. He said, I am not the same fighter. Not being wild. Three fight win streak with two finishes for Kalajic since the fight against Better BF. Some blood from the nose of Kalajic. Oh, nice right hand. That hurt him. Heavy punches landing here in round three. Yeah, Kalajic has been sparingly using that right hand, setting things up with the jab. Seems like he's taking his time trying to walk Ellison into a perfect shot. A lot of blood from the nose. Some heavy landings for Hot Rod 
here in round three. Looking for one more. Yeah, Ellison had some success in round one and two. This round three has been all collegiate. Oh, good overhand right there from Ellison. Right on cue. See some action from that last round. So that popping jab. And then I'd said that Kalajic has been using that right hand sparingly. That last round, he was letting it unfurl. Landed some really good shots. That was one that really had an effect on Ellison. That counter right hand over the top. Backed him straight out and gave him a little head nod that, yeah, I felt that. Robox TV. Your boxing channel, our main event tonight for the WBA Continental North America belt. Mickey Ellison, the Brit, is the central area title holder at light heavyweight. A title he has defended once, did so at Wembley Arena in October of last year on the undercard of a Katie Taylor performance to be remembered as they all seem to be. Oh, big jab, opens the round. Kalajic in the black and red, gray and black for Mickey Ellison. Fighting out of Bolton, England. Got the big man in the ring to close us out. You Main got that right. Evening. Big guys looking to do big hurt. Kalajic, Kalajic, pardon me, the Serbian, has also been in camp with Triple G in the past. Watch you it up. Not gonna get much better, better work than Triple G and better BF, some of the biggest punchers in the sport. You got that right. His father, Marco, wanted to box, but mom, which would be Radovoye's grandmother, would not allow it. Somehow, no, no, dad no, no, said no. to his son, yeah, all right, you can do it. It's funny how that works sometimes, right? My dad told me, he said, we got to ask your mother. <laughs> oh, good right hand down low. And if your mom would have said, ask your dad, you would have been out right to the gym. <laughs> Could have pulled it off. What did your father say? Yeah, he said yes. Yeah, everybody said yes. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't like it, but they all said yes. And here we are today. No, nope, nope. Rod said at first he just wanted to dress like a boxer because he thought wearing the shoes and shorts looked cool. He's, he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Does look cool. Oh, good snapping jab there. Got a game opponent and a tough out in the caveman, Mickey Ellison. Yeah, living up to the nickname. Being being durable, being tough, coming forward, throwing some bombs. But, man, the sharpness of Hot Rod tonight. Mixing things up nicely, setting up, thing, setting up shots with the jab, countering with the right hand, showing some nice defensive prowess. First fight in the United States, second, not in the UK for Mickey Ellison. Defense along the ropes there from Kalajic. Played the role of spoiler in 2018 in seconds. Zimbabwe. Hot Rod. <laughs> Covering up nicely at the end of that round after a good onslaught. Yeah, he did some really nice defensive work along along the ropes. Ellison's game, he's in there, he's throwing, but he's having a hard time putting some leather on Kalajic tonight. There we see a double jab from Kalajic, and Ellison, like I said, he's coming back. He's game, but can't get his hands on the target. He's slow. He backs up. He ain't got no angle, so just read him and settle, man. Oh, 
Our main event scheduled for 10 rounds. Kalajic moved to the U.S. at age seven. His family kept him safe. He said they avoided the war zones, but they were aware and very thankful to be here, be safe, and to continue to do something he loves, and that is battle within the squared circle. As he looks for a big win here in his Pro Box TV debut, body shot. He's doing a good job tonight. Yes, he is. Boxing well, boxing smart. Changing levels now. You heard the corner of Kalajic say he's slow. You're more athletic, more explosive than him. Just pick your shots and land them. Yeah, he's slow. He has no angles. Basically, he's a caveman, just like his nickname. <laughs> but be careful because he carries a club. Yeah, he does, man. He's been landing some good shots. He's a nice left hook there. You know, I clipped Kalajic along the ropes. Still got to be careful. The guys, like I said, game is, is the, the word that comes to mind when I'm, when I'm looking at his performance tonight. Ellison. Is. And Ellison just, like, walked right through a, a huge jab from Hot Rod to an already damaged nose from multiple jabs earlier. Oof. Little body head. Stab jab there from Kalajic. Good setup for the right hand over the top. Yeah, he's changing the levels a lot here in the early part of this round five. Double tripling up that left jab. Nice, quick left hook counter. Nope. The jab and the defense have been the thing that's been standing out the most that looks different to me from Kalajic. He's been working on some things, obviously. He said he was, but being able to bring it from the gym to the ring is a whole nother endeavor. the shoulders of Hot Rod. Final minute around five. Ooh. Ooh, big right hand again. Watch your right Let it go, Blue. Thirty seconds. Stop. Both men trying to work the uppercut. Yeah, okay. do just needs to be careful here, not to fall asleep. He's having a lot of success with the jab. He's being, he's having Ten seconds. A, 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 an easy time defending and staying in the pocket. Got to be careful. Still have a dangerous man in front of you. Oh, big left hand. Good finish for Hot Rod. So far, the man in this main event of the evening is that man right there, 27 and 2, 32 year old Radovoye Kalajic. Yeah, I feel like getting your rhythm yet? Starting a little bit? All right, yeah, now's when it starts. All right? Relax. That's been the theme in the corner of Hot Rod, Chris, is relax. Just continue to do the things that have become more natural to you in, in the evolution, even as he hits Pro Fight 30. If you're not moving forward, you're moving backward. Yeah, I and mean, I think that's a, especially for the temperament of Kalajic, like I said, in past fights that I've seen. And he, he tends to, he used to tend to work a little too hard. He was a little too frantic. Now he's definitely a lot more methodical. He works fine that jab. He's, he's, he's visualizing what's going on, setting things up. Much more of a boxer than a fighter. A little blood from the nose of Kalajic. Ellison 
14 and 4 coming in, 33 years old. Both of them with similar experience. 92 rounds coming in for Hot Rod, 93 for Ellison. Oh, big 2-1-2 two -two there. Oh, another right hand upstairs. Snaps the head back, Ellison. Big swing and a miss. Kalajic just moving out of harm's way and then firing back successfully. Yeah, rolling those shoulders nice. Understands the distance and the range. He's got such a speed advantage. He's able to make those decisions on the fly. Main event of the evening. Nice combination. It looks like a sparring session. At this yeah. Point. Clyde just is just doing whatever he wants, working on things, making things, making things happen. To the body, mixing things up again, Chris. Stay tall. The pace in which Hot Rod has set has been a tough one for the caveman to stay up with. But he's looking to make it a gritty fight right here, right now. It's been the jab and the defense. I mean, Ellison really can't build on any kind of momentum. He's not able to find the target. And when he is close enough to land, he's getting his head snapped back from the jab. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Landed a jab quickly there, but it was after a couple body shots thrown by Hot Rod. Stop. Now those snapping shots from Kalijic all night long. It's been the jab mostly, but he's been picking it up with the right hands there. He put one out, he came back with a nice one-two over the top as Ellison tried to circle out. Yo, man. Good? Round number seven. Mike Goldberg, powerful partner, former world champion, Chris Algieri, Kalajic, and Ellison. This one's scheduled for 10. Hot Rod with a sizable advantage numerically on the scorecards thus far. Yeah, Ellison game, but just, I mean, the speed, the athleticism, the, the fundamentals. Ellison didn't start boxing until age 23. Football, soccer as it is, didn't work, he said. He also had 12 Thai boxing fights all in England, so you can kind of relate, or you can relate to him and his, his trail towards Boxing as a professional career with that tie background. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, he, he only has 18 fights, but he had those 12 in there. Yeah, kind of guy, a 30, a 30 pro fight veteran. Gives you a better idea why he's in there tonight. Yeah, you know, with a guy like Kalajic with 29 fights. First fight since October 29th of last year for Ellison when he defended that British Central Area title. First fight since May 14th of last year for Kalajic. Watch 
We had it. Keep, keep in the front. There you go. Sometimes getting away from it a little bit to get back to the basics and rebuild isn't the worst thing. And as you've mentioned multiple times, Chris, we're seeing a much more disciplined Kalajic here. Ellison trying to put it on him, though, in round seven. Yeah, Kalajic, uh, sorry, Ellison letting his hands go here. Most sustained tack of the, of the night for him. I think uh, Kalajic might have lost his mouthpiece. Yep. Get back in. All right. All right. Time in. Bump. 40 seconds. You know, from the from those two fights, the Marcus Brown fight and the Archer Bitter Bia fight, I believe Kalai just understood that he's going to need to slow things down yeah. in order to be successful at the highest level. And he's had finishes in his last two fights. One in the first, one in the fourth. This one looks to be headed towards round eight. In a second. Oh! Over the top for Ellison. Big overhand left from Ellison. For the bell. You know, this is where those game guys come on. Yep. Cape Man's got some, some heavy hands again to round number seven. Best round we've seen from You're Mickey Ellison. Where's my feet? See a nice big jab from Kalijas as he circles off the ropes. He's back to the center of the ring, which is where he spent the majority of the fight tonight. But he did get pinned along the ropes a little bit there as Ellison put some pressure in that seventh round, lands a cuffing right hand. Not a damaging blow, but off. one Let's of the go. all this showing and taking land, one shot. of the only landed right. punches in the last Let's couple go. rounds hey. from Ellison. Yeah. And the corner immediately, uh, Kalajic said, where's the leg? So where's the movement that has worked so effectively and he has been so efficient with thus far in this fight? Oh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's controlled the space in the ring by staying in the center of the ring, using his feet, just like his, his coaches had said. That last round, he went to the ropes a few times and let Ellison get, get worked on. Now he's starting it out with some nasty jabs. And a right hand or two to follow up. He's over, he's over. See, I saw some flashes there of the Kalajic of old. He, he smothered himself, jumping up with the shots, yep. falling in. If he just stayed at a distance, he might have been able to put some real hurt on Ellison there. But instead, got tied up. And now we're back in the center of the ring. We knew Ellison was coming here to fight, looking to play the role of spoiler here in Tampa where Hot Rod has never lost. Man, double jab, 1-1-2, one, one, effective again for Kalajic. Ellison, he's one of those stubborn guys, man. Ton of heart, he's gritty. He'll be in there, you can jab him, Brett bust his nose all night long, he's still gonna be in there trying to win the fight. Again, a big jab. He said, expect a blistering performance and the best version of himself. And he's trying to come on late. Well, Kalajic has not allowed enough momentum. Oh! Right on cue, Chris. Just as we talked about momentum, down goes Ellison. And again, big right hands. It is all over. Radovoyai Kalajic with the finish. We're done, we're done. We're done, we're done, we're done, we're done. We're done. Twentieth knockout of Hot Rod's professional career. You know, I mentioned early on that Ellison is fights like a tall guy. He doesn't go underneath punches. Here you see him 
get a little bit low and gets cracked with the shot as he, as uh, Kalajic drops the right hand over the top. A lot of times tall guys hit harder from that position. Ellison figured that out right there. As Hot Rod drops the right hand and drops his man Ellison there, he switches it to the uppercut. Ellison doesn't see it, and then it's a couple overhand rights. And the referee had seen enough there in round number nine. Hard to argue the stoppage. Wasn't getting any better for Ellison. He was game. He was tough. He was coming in, still throwing hard shots, but just different different level tonight was Kalajic. And you saw a different Kalajic, didn't you, Chris? Absolutely, absolutely. Way, way more uh, 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 calm, way more controlled, smarter, defensively sound, sharper jabs, set up his power punches better, a lot less smothering of himself. To make it official, Beatrice Kalis. After 10 rounds of pure pro box, this is the final decision. Después de 10 rondas de puro pro box, esta es la decisión oficial. The official time, 155 of round number eight, el tiempo oficial. Un minuto y 55 segundos del round número ocho. And the winner, by technical knockout, el ganador por knockout técnico. Radivaj Hotno Kalajic! WBA Continental North America belt goes to Hot Rod with the eighth round finish of the Brit Mickey Ellison. From the start, that jab was a dangerous and heavily utilized weapon by Kalajic. Yeah, that jab was snappy and fast all night long. Kalajic showed some improved defensive abilities, especially on the ropes there, rolling shots, catching things on his elbow. You know, the speed differential was there, but listen, Eric Ellison had some heavy hands. He landed a good left hook there in the inside that caught the attention of Hot Rod. Hot Rod went back to boxing after that, was like, all right, let me not play with this guy. He's still got power. I'm gonna break him down, get him later. And that's exactly what he did. Using that jab, started snapping the right hands upstairs. So as you can see, not huge power shots from Kalajic, which you're gonna use to see for him. Much more snappy, much, bo much, much, much smarter boxing. There we see a good hard jab upstairs. He had bloodied the nose of Ellison early on and just kept Kept the pressure of that jab on. Ellison started to come on, pin Kalajic on the ropes in that round number seven, but then round number eight, big overhand right drops Ellison. Kalajic comes in to finish, lands a few more right hands, first with an uppercut, then a couple overhands, and the ref had seen enough. You know, at times it looked like Kalajic was sparring in there, working on things, but then snapped it. Snapped into it there in that last round, got his man out of there. Wednesday night fights here on your boxing channel. September 20th, we are right back here amongst the men who will enter the Pro Box TV ring. Guatemala's Lester Martinez, 16 and 0, with 14 knockouts against Lonnie B. Lionel Thompson, who has shared the ring with Hot Rod and also Sergey Kovalev. That is part of our package two weeks from tonight. Join us for all the action on my daughter's birthday, Wednesday, September 20th. Chris, you and I and Paulie, we've talked about how things have stepped up and improved, and we've got guys like Freddie Roach in the house in the, in the last month or so. William Foster III, Missa Al Lopez, and then the way Hot Rod performed tonight, things just get better and better. Yeah, I know. We're definitely stepping up our level in terms of, uh, first of all, the, the personalities that we're bringing to the yes, basket. Yes, yes. You know, uh, also the, the personalities we're bringing to the TV shows and the news. But listen, our fights. We're, we're, we're consistently having good main events, and now our co-mains could be yeah. main events on, on, real, on other shows. And we've done it more consistently than I think anybody out there. So, again, brother, it makes our job much easier. You got that right. It's fun doing it. It's fun watching the powerful Filipino Jonas Sultan as well. That, that dude is a dangerous man. Yeah, he always comes in great shape. He's super durable, brings the power. It's fun to watch. Awkward, but strong. Always a pleasure, my friend. My man. It was a good show again, put on by 22-year-old Dominic Valle, still unbeaten in his young professional career. We talked about the Filipino who was able to better Frank Gonzalez than William Foster III.
and Hot Rod, both with finishes. From our partner, Chris Algieri, Mike Goldberg, saying so long until next time, we see you right back here on Pro Box TV.